So the brand new Paco Rabanne fragrance is called Invictus Platinum. I'm actually borrowing my friend Chris's bottle from the channel Casual Fragrances. Thank you so much, Chris. This is one that I wasn't really sure if I wanted to buy it or not, especially since I've been hearing a lot of mixed reviews since its release. But in any case, it's a 2022 release. I've been playing around with it. I have a good understanding and feeling for it now. So I'm excited to give you my thoughts on it very soon. So make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin today's review and I tell you all about the brand new Paco Rabanne fragrance, this one is called Invictus Platinum, and I let you know what it smells like, notes, comparison, and also if I think this one is worth purchasing, I do want to start this video off by mentioning that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit that bell icon so you could be notified every time I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you took something of value from today's episode. It would really mean a lot to me. So take a look at this fragrance. It has a very peculiar note breakdown. For some people though, it's gonna be kind of in a good way, right? So there's absinthe, so that could be a little spicy, aromatic, herbal, boozy. Of course, wormwood is the main component to an absinthe accord. Of course, there's also grapefruit to add a little brightness in the opening. And then as it dries down, you have some greener nuances of cypress, patchouli. And so this one does kind of have an underlying sweetness that's gonna remind you of the original Invictus, but I think with a twist. So I'm excited to give you my more comprehensive thoughts on the smell. Let's start off with a quick look at the presentation. So to start things off, this fragrance is quite spicy in the opening. Now, when I initially took a look at the note breakdown, I was kind of under the impression that mint would be one of the stronger notes in here. And I'm not getting a whole lot of mint necessarily just because it doesn't have that bright sort of nasal cavity opening effect that a lot of peppermint, spearmint, and even euc eucalyptus based fragrances tend to have. No, on the other hand, this fragrance actually starts off a little spicy, a little herbal, all the while having the sweetness <laughs> that is present in the base. Now it's the sweetness that makes me say, you know what, this does smell kind of similar to the original Invictus, but with a twist. And so, the original, I remember it having a lot of sweetness in the base that I would attribute to like tonka bean or something like that. But then there was this bay leaf note, which kind of smells like eugenol or clove. So it does kind of have like this bright minty aromatic effect. So I think what we're seeing in this new version is more of like a reinterpretation of the note breakdown and a reinvention of the note breakdown rather than the smell. In terms of the smell itself is, I think there's only a little bit of a tweak, not a minor tweak per se, but not a very significant tweak either. I think there's just enough of a difference to make you say, hmm, this isn't quite the original, but I can see how this is a sibling or a close cousin. Now, in terms of that note in the opening, meaning the, you know, absinthe accord, you do have wormwood, or Artemisia, and it kind of gives it this spicy, herbal, aromatic personality. Of course, if you smell fragrances like Absinthe by Nasomato, you would have a good idea of what that sort of smells like. But then you also have the green elements, the cypress, the mint, the patchouli, and I think they all sort of come together to give this underlying earthy tone, which I think is a pretty decent complement to the Absinthe Accord, right? So at the end of the day, this one still has that sweetness from the original, where if you smell it, you're gonna be like, yep, the original was good for clubbing, this one is good for clubbing. The original was good for a date night, this is also good for a date night. What I would probably say is this one leans a little bit more mature, which is not necessarily something that you got from like Invictus Intense or, you know, whatever the Intense version was. And I know with Invictus Victory, I mentioned that there was a little bit of like a chocolatey vibe that I got from that fragrance. So even that had like a sweet characteristic to it, but it was like a reinterpretation of the sweetness where here it's a toned down sweetness with some more mature elements added to the top. And you know, when you do let it dry down a little bit, the cypress becomes a little bit more apparent, the patchouli becomes a little bit more apparent. What you're gonna get overall is this green, slightly spicy, 
herbal and aromatic fragrance with a decent amount of sweetness in the base that makes it accommodating for like clubbing or partying scenarios, a date night or whatever, but not as sweet as the original or perhaps even some of the flankers. So if that sounds appealing to you, I think you should go out and, you know, potentially purchase this one. Myself, realistically speaking, I love Invictus Aqua. Um, I'm just gonna get that out of the way. I think that's probably my favorite flanker from all of the ones that they've manufactured. I really enjoy Invictus Victory as well. I kind of like that chocolatey vibe that it gives across, but I don't know if I enjoy it more than Bad Boy by Carolina Herrera because I think they establish a similar vibe, if you will. So I do like Invictus Aqua. I like the compliment factor of it. I like the versatility of it. I like how freely I can wear it despite the season or occasion, even though it is geared more towards the hotter weather. This one is kind of like a unicorn where it has the sweetness. So it makes you think, oh, this is gonna be like a partying and clubbing fragrance. But then there's like a spicy element to it as well, like a spicy herbal element. So I do like the uniqueness behind it, but I don't know if the functionality is gonna be as high as something like the original Invictus or an Invictus Aqua. However, all scent is subjective. So if you can find yourself in a department store that carries this one, I would certainly recommend that you try it for yourself. Be your own judge. You might actually really enjoy it. And the more I smell it, it is actually a unique scent. There's perhaps even something resinous happening in here. Very, very different, very interesting. I don't know how much it, it evokes a, a sense or a feeling of platinum as a metal or otherwise, but in any case, I think it is an acquired taste in some ways, and I hope you have the opportunity to try it soon. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I think the overall smell is very pleasant. I don't think there's enough of that you know, herbal aromatic thing in the opening that it's gonna be a put off to any people, but I think that with it having that ample amount of sweetness in the base, I think people are still going to really enjoy it and they're gonna find it quite functional in the sense that you can still wear it comfortably in a variety of different scenarios. However, of all of the Invictus fragrances that were released, I think this is probably the most unique one. Even with the original Invictus, one of my gripes was that it kind of followed that whole Tonka bean trend. And what we're seeing here is a healthy deviation from that. So I actually really appreciate how they took this in a more unique direction. And I think that that ultimately is a good thing. Longevity for this one is about eight hours, which is quite good. Projection was great for the first hour of application. It did start to sit closer to the skin at that five hour mark. In terms of the versatility, you can wear this one dressed up, dressed down because of the sweetness. You can wear this in a formal scenario as long as you don't overdo it. And then you can wear this one on a night out, clubbing, partying, all of the aforementioned things. And I do think it leans a little bit unisex, especially because of the woods, the green elements and the spices. And in terms of the presentation, I suppose platinum is a cool name. I'm not entirely sure. I think that there is a certain aesthetic to it with the coloration on the bottle here. It does kind of give it a, a platinum-esque appearance. My final verdict on this fragrance is, I think it's a solid release. Um, it's not my favorite. I would still, I think, prefer Invictus Aqua whatever version you have, um, Invictus Victory. And I do like some of the other flankers as well. This one is probably the more unique release of all of the previous flankers, and that includes the original as well. Um, but I do think that it's going to be, for many, an acquired taste. So definitely go out there, try it for yourself. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something or took something of value, please do consider showing your support by subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell icon as well so you can be notified every time I do upload a video to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up. It would greatly assist the YouTube algorithm and it would put my videos in front of more people's faces. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow.